so we can start uh, today's session by professor hari krishnan professor hari krishnan is a faculty from uh, the cochin university of science and technology from the division of mechanical engineering you were all introduced to him yesterday and yesterday we had an excellent session by him and today also we are looking forward to a very good session uh, by professor hari krishnan and his talk will be uh, carried forward by mr john pinto uh, who will be handling the demonstration part so professor hari krishnan uh, will be talking about the logic of meshing in 3d uh, today in the first half and then uh, mr john pinto will take the uh, hands on session so over to you sir so yesterday so i hope all of you enjoyed the tutorial session also um in which in tutorial i think you did a two dimensional meshing a two dimensional body meshing using block mesh within the so we will actually go further how to go ahead with a three dimensional body or three dimensional domain and what are the things we should actually keep in mind especially when we use block mesh so as i said so this is only using block mesh utility as i said yesterday it is also possible to make mesh geometry etc using some other softwares or other utilities like nappy x mesh or even ansys icm or hypermesh or any other meshing softwares so here i will be focusing more on block mesh utility okay so the contents are what i what i thought was i will just give the brief overview about the process especially a, let's say three dimensional pipe case and followed by the tutorial session by john so the basic background i will be explaining and then you will be having a hands on session you will be also replicating the meshing 3d meshing of the 3d pipe uh, with the help of john by following the spoken tutorials right so we will start with so yesterday we stopped at a simple rectangular block mesh right so linear one cavity problem or a uh, two dimensional channel flow so basically we have a two dimensional domain okay so now we will go ahead with exploring the other op 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 options available in the block mesh especially how do we make non uniform mesh yesterday i discussed it is also possible to make non uniform mesh in open, uh, this block mesh and how do we make curved geometries and some tutorials is already available tutorial plate fold tutorial uh, especially not tutorial in the sense uh, the block mesh file we will just see how they made the block mesh corresponding to the plate fold tutorial and finally we'll see what exactly is a 3d pipe how do we model 3d pipe etc okay so to begin with let me summarize what we discussed yesterday so we discussed about the block mesh command in detail and block mesh command whenever we type block mesh in the terminal so immediately it will call block mesh dict file present in the system folder and in what are the instructions given in the block mesh dict file will be used for generating the mesh and this is a typical example for a, let's say for a cavity problem i just copy pasted the snapshots from the block mesh dict file so what we essentially do these are the commands basic commands some of them we already discussed convert to meters so we know that when we make a geometry first thing is we should have points so we need to define the vertices first so that is what you can see here it is followed by block so we are connecting these vertices to make a hexagonal block and that is what we mentioned here blocks hexagonal then followed by the vertices followed by the number of divisions in the x direction number of divisions in the y direction and number of divisions in the z direction followed by something called simple grading so that we didn't discuss yesterday so we will discuss that part in detail in the upcoming slides and what is simple grading how do we give non uniform mesh how do we generate non uniform mesh etc with the help of simple grading and this will be followed by edges edges also we didn't discuss yesterday and we will be also discussing about we also discuss about boundaries how do we define top walls and what is a pattern or how do we identify these vertices etc top wall bottom wall uh, or fixed walls front and back walls etc okay so when we execute block mesh command you will see we will be having um, uh, mesh will be generated and we will be able to see that with the help of paravi software so what is non uniform grading or when what is non uniform mesh so as you can see from the right hand side figure so the meshes or the cells very near to the left hand side wall that is here you can clearly say that the, the cell size is very small or very fine and slowly there is an increase in the cell size value when we travel from left side to right side so typically when we have wall wall driven floors or ex wall driven floors so we generally prefer 
non uniform mesh or very fine mesh near the walls in order to capture each and every eddies in order to capture the flow physics in a proper way so the main advantages are we can reduce the total number of cells so instead of keeping the cell size as the smallest one throughout the domain so what we do we will keep the fine mesh wherever we have steeper grad gradients then we will keep the coarse meshes where there is no steeper gradients okay so that that basically help us to identify uh, help us to reduce the computational time required for the simulations so how can we achieve these kind of meshes using a block mesh utility so before that we should know there is a term called expansion ratio so the simple grading command is used for generating non uniform mesh and the expansion ratio is defined as so there is let's say you are going to connect so you can just see this figure you are going to connect two vertices by using an edge let's say 0 to 1 and we know that when we keep the number of divisions in x direction let's say 10 so that will initially that will equal that will divide this line equally let's say into 10 10 sections right so when i give simple grading with certain values other than 1 what happens is these are known as the value present within this bracket is known as expansion ratio expansion ratio is defined as the i am moving from left to right right okay expansion ratio is divided is defined as the cell width at the last that is near the point 1 divided by cell width at the first cell so the ratio between the cell width of the last cell that is at the end point near the end point that is near the point 1 to that of uh, the cell very near to near to the starting point so you, this direction is also very important so you can see when i keep expansion ratio greater than 1 okay what happens the final one will be much higher as compared to the initial one so obviously gradients are or fine mesh is near to this edges and what if if i keep this instead of 10 if i keep point 1 so higher the bigger cells are near this point near this point 0 and smaller cells are near this point 1 so in this way we will be able to fine tune if you want refinement in this particular near this wall it is possible by keeping at um, greater than 1 as a expansion ratio uh, expansion ratio it's up to you to decide how to proceed etc generally if it is greater than 1 it we will be having coarse mesh when we move towards positive x direction and vice versa so as i said expansion ratio is the ratio of the width of the end cells along one edge of a block to the width of the start cell along that edge so this is what happens when i change it slightly so same case i just kept point 1 instead of 10 earlier cases so previous case here you can see uh, instead of 10 what i did 1 by 10 i just kept point 1 that is the first cell height is very very high 10 times higher than that of the last cell height okay so this is an example for non uniform grading in a simple application using block mesh So what happens when we need a refinement in both sides? So what we need to do, we should consider two blocks, and generally we should consider two blocks and keep grading one in the positive, uh, let's say greater than one, and the other one is less than one, such a way that we will have a fine mesh near the let's say left hand side wall as well as right hand side wall. Okay, that is one of the utility, one of the thing, one of the additional thing available in block mesh utility. And now we will see. geometry with curved edges so it is not so we yesterday we were discussing about very standard geometry that is rectangular block in most of the cases we may have some curved geometries also so in that scenario is it possible for us to identify or is it possible for us to make a curved geometry in uh, curved geometry in block mesh yes so in order to do that what we need to do is we will be using an option called edges so after vertices and after blocks there is an option called edges and yesterday we saw that that was empty and we can see this is an example in which i same lid driven cavity problem i made a con uh, i made a curve here in this particular end in this particular end in the sense between 2 to 1 as well as 6 to 5 or uh, 1 to 2 and 5 to 6 i made a curve so how how is it possible so let's say this is point number 1 and this is point number 2 so we know that if you want to make a curve let's say um, i am going to connect these two with an arc 
so the command i use here is known as r followed by the vertices 1 and 2 so 1 and 2 followed by a coordinate so basically this coordinate indicates any point within the arc so for time being i just kept this as a midpoint so let's say this is 1.2 0.5 and 1 so what was the dimensions uh, coordinates here i think this was 1 0 and 0 and this was 1 1 0 okay. so this is a third point so when i say arc 1 2 be followed by a coordinate so it will automatically make a edge that is actually arc that is going through this particular point so if you want a different arc you can keep different different coordinates such a way that we we may have different arc so when we make when we modify the existing lid driven cavity problem or a 2d plane channel flow what we need to do is we should also make let's say i want to make some mesh something like this then we should also make two at this especially 1 to 2 as well as 5 to 6 or 6 to 5 both curve then then we can uh, do the same thing whatever whatever we did earlier like hexagonal number of division if you want refinement then it is also possible right so this is just an example for making a curved edge using block mesh utility okay so as of now we were discussing only about a single block in general right so i had only single block so let me ask you one question so in the next slide i have two figures mesh 1 and mesh 2 okay so can you just tell me what are the major difference you can just type in chat box what is the major difference from mesh 1 and mesh 2 or oh, which one is good according to you okay someone says mesh 2 mesh 2 or grid or grid what is the siding showed here yes so most of you agree that second one is better compared to the first one as you can see here you can see there are some cells in which so as i said we have uniform mesh and it is structured mesh as well as unstructured mesh and there are something called mesh quality we were discussing like skewness of the cell and aspect ratio of the cells etc so there is a preferred range of aspect ratio skewness values etc and if you have a very highly skewed cell what happens either it may leads to some error or it will take long time to get the results so we prefer uh, our meshes or cells in a range of skewness values range of aspect ratio values etc so we try to avoid highly skewed cells when we make meshes so you can see there are some cells in which you can see here some skewed cells are there so here you can see in this cell i don't have actually a four edges i have only mainly three edges especially in these corners so the first one what i did i have the what i did is i generated the geometry by using the same coordinate uh, from the lid driven cavity problem then instead of a rectangular a straight line i was trying to connect it with the help of arc so when we have a four arc with a proper radius what happens it will make a circle then same block mesh whatever we did i used and the mesh what you can see here is obtained by using the same methodology what we were discussing earlier right <coughs> on the other hand i did a different method i used multiple blocks to generate mesh as shown here so interestingly you can see we have a rectangular block here which is having equal number of divisions in the x direction maybe you not equal we have divisions in the x direction as well as y direction and you can see there are some radial lines this was not present earlier you can see these radial lines are not there you can see the radial lines like a spider net you can see then we are dividing this radial net in the radial direction right so in theta direction as well as r direction we have number of divisions so in order to make these kind of these mesh types of meshes are known as o grids typically for circular geometry we always prefer o grid or similar to o grid approaches and if you want to make these kind of grids we should what we need to do is we should actually consider multiple blocks as an example you can see i consider uh, for a circular body whole circular body let's say some complete circle i will make multiple blocks in which in the center i have a simple rectangular block okay 
and <coughs> on followed by you can see there are some rectangular it's not rectangular bro we can say we have four sides and we have one two three and four four different blocks are surrounded by this surrounded by this central rectangular block and this edges what we will do we will keep these edges as a arc right so these edges as a arc these edges are as a arc then what we do we will give the so we have one two three four five blocks and each side edge we will divide so let's say i need to give the number of division in this direction so automatically here also it will come then in this direction then in this direction also only three direction so x direction y direction and radial lines so these edges also we need to give the number of division such a way that we will get very clean mesh like as i showed earlier so what if if you have a semi circular geometry so we'll just divide this so still we have so this is a central one then let's say 2 3 4 4 blocks will be there compared to 5 blocks so if is if it is 1 by 4th of the circle then same methodology we will be adopting so essentially we will be we need to generate multiple blocks and basically when we have multiple blocks we will also uh, have a better control also and the last one is known as l grid so when we have 1 by 4th one so the right hand side figure the mesh final one you can just so see here is taken from uh, a tutorial called plate hole tutorial which is already available in open form so you can see it's a combination of a semi 1 by 4th of a circle followed by a rectangular block so the blocks you are going to see here is so here we have a semi circle 1 by 4th of the circle and hollow circle you can say right it's not even complete circle so i have a circle like this then i have a rectangular block like this here and here i what i have i have one of the edges as curve and other three edges are essentially straight line connected with straight lines so when we have a geometry like this then we should know how to decompose these blocks so that is one of the main challenges and you need to may need to identify the coordinates and then we will uh, do block mesh utility so so this is typical example for a block uh, circular cylinder you can see in z direction let's say this is x direction y direction and z direction the top one may looks like this so we have a rectangular block here and then we will have a radial division as we saw earlier okay so now i am just going to explain uh, the basic idea as, as we discussed that is plate with the hole so this tutorial is already available in open form and the details regarding the block mesh file is clearly explained in the uh, user guide also i will just share the location of the tutorials in the chat box you can later on also so this particular tutorial so there are hundreds of tutorials so many tutorials are available within the open form then <coughs> you can also explore other other not only related to fluid mechanics and heat transfer you can also explore uh, the other uh, tutorials in the other solver directories also for example this is an example i took from a stress analysis solid displacement form solver so this tutorial you will find in tutorial folder then stress analysis then solid displacement form and the tutorial name is known as plate fold so what we essentially in this problem what we are going to do is we have a rectangular block and we, we have a hole in the center we are applying stress in the both direction that is sigma values 10 kpa in the both direction and we use open form for solving solving this that is for identifying the stresses within the domain so because of the symmetric nature they just consider only 1 by 4th of the domain that will actually help us to save the computational time so only 1 by 4th of 4th of the domain is which is indicated here as a shaded portion is considered then as i said earlier i just divided these things into actually five blocks so here you can see uh, the this part uh, earlier i said it was four here you can see this one also they divided into two pieces so 0 1 2 3 and 4 so four different five different blocks right then here you can see this is an example simply a rectangular block kind of thing you can easily give the number of divisions in the x direction y direction etc similarly for the other blocks also so finally this will be converted to this kind of mesh right 
so the details regarding uh, the tutorials and the explanation regarding all these commands measures are already available in the user guide chapter uh, one i think tutorial so plate hold you can just search plate hold tutorial and the, the details are available in the tutorial okay so now the last one is known as 3d pi so i just started with simply rectangular block that is a cavity tutorial right then what i did what we saw we saw how to give a non uniform mesh then the third case we consider 2d case itself but with a curved edge curved edges like a lid driven cavity problem with one of the side as concave or convex convex curve then we also consider we also consider multiple blocks that is when we have a complicated geometry or if you want to make o grid kind of thing then uh, we should consider multiple blocks in the domain so now we are going to see the following the session uh, or the after my session you will be doing a tutorial called a 3d pipe so 3d pipe is essentially we are trying to simulate a case that is flow laminar flow in a three dimensional pipe so the dimension of the pipes are given like 0.3 meters in the length and diameter is 1 cm and as we know we have certain boundary conditions that is inlet outlet as well as wall so at the end of the tutorial you will be able to generate a mesh like this right so i will just see the basic idea behind uh, 3d pipe so as i said earlier so we have a circular end here so here the number of divisions is very straight forward because it's a straight line if it is a curved pipe then it will be slightly challenging so here you can see it's a straight line so the number of divisions in along the flow direction is very easy but when we have a circular end you can see uh, we should adopt o grid kind of methodology so how is it possible so as i said earlier we need to divide this domain into multiple blocks so this is a schematic of the block shown here so first thing is you should identify the coordinates so let us see this case let's say the one of the end let's say front face as well as back face and back face view you can see we'll start with the origin which is indicated as zero right then we need to identify an points a like coordinates corresponding to these points 1 2 3 and 4 and the total diameter is given as 1 cm right and we should also identify the coordinates that is 5 6 7 8 then we should also identify if you are simply using a, a edge command without using edge command it will connect that these vertices with a straight line then we should also know what are these coordinates right then only we will be able to make the r so i am connecting 7 to 8 with an r which is going to this coordinate so i am connecting uh, 5 to 8 or 8 to 5 by considering going through this coordinate and similarly so wherever we have an r we should know the third point in which the r goes through it so this is for the back face similarly we should also define the coordinates corresponding to the front face so this is a center point then followed by let's say 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 etc so then we have around 18 points so 18 vertices are there right so starting from 0 1 2 3 up to 17 so total 18 vertices are there and the block structure is going to be like this the central one either we so no need to keep this also uh, circular you can also keep the it as a rectangular uh, you don't need to keep it r okay so the next slide i will show you what happens if you keep this r without r what are the major difference okay so we will we are having basically three five different blocks block 1 then block 2 3 4 and 5 and along the z direction you can see it will be extended that is front face points let's say 10 9 10 will be connected with the point 2 and 2 9 will be connected with the point 1 similarly 11 will be connected with the 3 and 12 will be connected with 4 similarly all these four points also 14 6 uh 13 5 15 7 16 8 etc that's what it is shown here so 10 is connected with 2 right so 10 here and 2 here similarly 9 1 12 4 11 and 3 so this is only for the block number 1 
okay similarly you should also uh, know what are the points that is going to connect the block number 2 from the front face as well as back face and block number 3 block no, block number 4 and block number 5 so what happens when we connect these blocks then we need to do we need to give, give the number of divisions so the number of divisions so we are we are connecting example is you can see here we are connecting hexagonal block by connecting these these many points 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 9 10 11 12 you can just see 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 9 10 11 12 12 so the central block is indicated with this and number of divisions in the x direction is given y direction is given z direction is given okay with simple grading in this example we just use simple grading okay so when we apply this or when we have these things let's say same 18 coordinates then connecting all those things so each time we need to make a block so earlier case we saw that we have only one block so here we will be having five blocks so similar to this in the block sub directly you will see hexagonal with four hexagons right hexagonal with this is first block second block third block fourth block and five blocks sorry five numbers and we will be able to generate the mesh by using block mesh command so this is what happens as i said earlier so can you spot the difference between this mesh as well as this mesh what might be the difference what might be the reason for the variation first one and uh second one mesh one and mesh two you can just comment in chat box hello yes i think in mesh one there are some non conformal elements yes like the nodes which are not connected between the circular part in the center yes, and the yes yes other yes. part yes the main thing is you can see as he said ragavendra said uh, these things are actually uh, shyly skewed okay the main difference was i connected these points also with as with the arc instead of a straight line on the other hand the interior nodes like let's say 9 10 11 12 here i just connected that with a simple uh, straight line so because of that you can see here we have a uh, very good cells and you can see here it is skewed cells and so we generally prefer this if i type check mesh command as i said earlier i'll be able to see that the aspect ratio it's somewhere around i think it is somewhere around 30 not 20 and so on the other hand i have 18 so lower aspect ratio is always preferred and so that's what when we make meshes we should also know even if you are using multiple blocks etc then we should actually check the quality of the mesh by typing check mesh command and if we are having highly skewed cells level high values of skewness or when check mesh utility says the meshes are not okay then we should open it in the para view and see where are those issues then we should try to address that by using a different blocking strategy okay so this is just an overview about making three dimensional pipe mesh okay so the session followed by this will be hands on session then you will have more idea you will be also reproducing these things in your uh, in your computer using the available files provided by positive so let me then i wanted to show you few more things that is not part of block mesh so this was the thing mentioned in the let's say for a two dimensional flow we know that we when we have a fully developed flow we have a parabolic velocity profile what do you think for a pipe flow is it a parabolic or some other shape i will address your questions whatever you mentioned in the chat box after this session okay is it parabolic two dimensional or three dimensional what do you think two dimensional okay for a 3d pipe mm, paraboloid yeah yeah paraboloid okay yes three dimensional so is it possible to visualize that using paraform what do you think you understood okay those who didn't understand i will show you in the next slide so what happens is so the velocity profile at any particular size is going to be in this way so in 2d view you may think it's like a parabola but actually in a three dimensional structure it may looks like this so how to visualize that i will just show you a small demo that is 
i already completed running the case let's say you can also try this after running the case so the pipe case uh, i completed and i just opened it in the para view right so then so this is a typical uh, condors you can see pressure condors and velocity condors etc now what i am going to do is i am just going to make a slice at any particular location so there is an option called slice in the left hand side and i am going to make a slice in the z direction that is cross section of the pipe flow then if you just zoom it you can see if you see the velocity profiles you can see at the central portion we have a relatively higher values of velocity and it reduces towards the edges right so now i am going to use an option called warp so basically it converts you know that in these cells some values are filled so it converts these values into a contour with the help of some velocity vectors so uh, in order to visualize that what i did i am just going to make it uh, reduce op op opacity of the outer domain you can see that i reduce opacity and like the increase then you go to warp and zoom it or color it with uh, x velocity component or magnitude of the velocity component you can see the three dimensional structure of the velocity profile at that particular plane okay so the utility i used or the option i used is known as warp so basically it will help us to identify the three dimensional velocity profiles in a channel flow okay so these are some of the examples on how to use para view etc for visualizing the results so let me go through uh, i also wanted to show you some other things which is not part of block mesh but it will be very useful i felt so exploring the other options available in open form for an example there are lot of options as i said earlier in the user guide we have only 300 pages or 400 pages of uh, material and there are thousands of utilities available in open form and sometime what happens is we don't even know these are the options available for an example let us say yesterday you were doing a case with a laminar flow right so i am just going to open a tutorial called pitch daily okay pitch daily is basically a channel flow with a modified it's not a simple rectangle of channel slightly modified okay in that i am just going to explore okay let me show you the other one itself cavity that will be better so i will go to the block mesh dial i hope my screen is visible right yes sir it is visible yes yes thank you so see i am very curious to know what are the options available in edges okay by default in cavity tutorial there is nothing is empty so what i am going to do is i'll just some i will just type some random name let's say uh something which is irrelevant okay it should be irrelevant okay then i am just going to save then i am going back then i will run the block mesh file so what you can see here is when i type this block mesh it will show that whatever i type there is not valid and the options available in that particular so i just write i have just wrote something like trial okay then i am just going to type block mesh so it will you can see some error came okay there are a lot of things so these things may be a bit confusing but if you scroll up you can see if you go to block mesh sheds type especially the file name so they are saying in block mesh dict file i think the this particular thing valid blockage types are so they are saying unknown blockage type trial and these are the possible options so you either you should mention these options or you should not mention anything so when i type some wrong commands there what happen they will say this is a option available b spline is there arc is there line is there polyline is there then project project curve splines etc so sometime what happens is i used to keep this kind of method to identify what are the other options available for example yesterday you were doing an example with the laminar flow or ras right rans based simulations etc if you wanted to know what are the options available other than ras you just type instead of ras you just type something else and try to run it when we run that it will show this command not found these are the options available so with the help of this you will be also able to identify what are the other options available that is mainly because as i said earlier the documentation part is relatively weak 
so once you get this keyword then you will be also able to search based on this keyword what do you mean by b spline you will get lot of materials from internet as well as within the open form tutorials okay then another important thing is let us say i saw that there is something called project right uh, there is a call option called project available so i am familiar with r b b spline or line polyline etc but i don't know what is project or uh, what are, where are the examples available within the uh, open form directory with the name projects so there is an option to search that also within that that is uh, this command so within the open form tutorial so when we copy paste this command find form tutorials name block mesh dict then grp hyphen l then projects what they are doing is in the open form tutorial folder it will start searching all block mesh dict files and they will identify the keywords wherever they mention project then it will show the list of files list of block mesh files i am just copy pasting this also in the chat box i will show you so uh, you can see here i'm just going to paste it so i can what i can see is in compressible uh, tutorials compressible in this particular tutorial also i used a term called project and not i it is available so you can go through it and understand it or aerofoil or cooling sphere these are the tutorials in which we used uh, we used uh, project term within the block mesh file and sometime we should also sometime along with this sometime what happens is we should know uh, we we may not we may not remember where we mention our fluid properties okay so let's say new value if you don't know where you kept new values within a file that is you are going to search within the file so i can just type grp hyphen r then nu then you can see within constant folder transport properties nu is defined right so basically what i am going what i showed here is i am i will be able to search within a document file text file with a keyword if i type grp hyphen r followed by the term that term wherever this term comes i will be able to identify that so the file directory name is shown here okay so this is also very very important for an example i will show you i am going to the tutorials tutorials folder available in the open form installation so let us say i want to search within this i want to know there are some utility let's say fe options widely used in certain cases especially when we have a source term install so source term uh, included in the governing equations so if i want to find the tutorials in which we used fe option so what similar i can use this command i am just going to open the terminal in that particular folder then i will just type the grep command there so grep hyphen r let's say fv option so this is very case sensitive so you should be very careful about the upper case and small case you can see in these tutorials there is a utility they use a few options okay so these commands i felt this this is also very very a helping command especially finding something within the text files etc otherwise you need to open each and every block mesh file and identify whether any other options other than arc is used or not right so with the help of grp and as well as find command you will be also able to identify these files directories etc then you can understand it then you can start implementing it in your cases okay so with this i would like to end my session i will just go through the uh, questions in the chat box one second i will paste the grp command example here so grp hyphen r followed by the keyword what you want to search so let me go through the questions how can i akshay was asking how can i make thermodynamic properties temperature dependent in open form i'm not sure by default earlier it was not there so recent developments i'm not sure whether it by default it is there but there are some additional utilities the main advantages advantages of open form or open source software as i said it's a collaborative development so there are some tools like swag for form and some other additional tool developed by some other groups 
which can be easily plugged into the open form uh, open form and we will be able to use udf that is user defined function let's say for giving inlet boundary condition so instead of a straight line uniform velocity inlet if you want a time dependent or a parabolic velocity inlet so some utilities additional utilities are also there nowadays even open form also they started adopting and it is also possible to do this kind of thing in open form so temperature dependent properties right now i am not sure some utilities might be there yes it is already mentioned by pranoy we'll have to add t file in the zeroth folder and modify thermodynamic properties file in constant okay then yes so khodar was asking whether we need to give zero and 7 is not required because the origin uh, in that particular example uh, they just mentioned uh, they started with origin it's not required because this origin especially that in the front the front face as well as the back face origin we are not at all using for making the blocks so i think it's not required yes so there was another question pipe flow problem isn't it more efficient to use axis symmetric pro simulations so if it is a lamina steady flow simulations we know that it is symmetric so it is fine but if you are going with going if you are just going to do with in a highly high velocity turbulent flow etc so always three dimensional domain will be better so how to use block mesh for inclined surfaces chances of getting most when it flow over a triangular body yes you should have a clear idea about how to make a block we should there is something called blocking strategy so there are some methods in which we can actually avoid inclined surfaces especially high skewed skewed highly skewed cells etc so different blocking strategies are there so can we mesh an imported cat file so generally in block mesh we generate we give dimensions manually imported cat files i am not sure i didn't try it till now uh, 3d pipe can create coach commands is not from block mesh basically for decomposing the domain so there are different methods available to decompose the domain for running parallel right so that part i think later stages they will explain yeah it is possible to use uh, tetrahedral elements also no issues so we can get blocking so you may have to find some tutorials available online especially some tutorials related to flow pass block bodies we can also take this by taking domain like a rectangular block box instead of yes it is why so paridho i didn't get your question yeah uh, this is paridosh actually i want to say uh, why we have taken the coordinates of each point instead of we can take a rectangular box okay that has hold the pipe and we can see x maximum y minimum and x like this coordinate and we can put it in block then, mesh then it will be a rectangular domain only right no but it will contain my geometry has a uh, circular pipe and it will mesh it why i am asking this question example if you have a car then how we are going to mesh it it's not oh. possible to take the coordinates right of a car okay okay then how yeah. we are going to mesh it if this is a car case mm -hmm. so let's say you are keeping a car in a wind tunnel okay it's like okay. Like, like that you are saying yes yes okay okay fine fine, fine. so in, that, in those scenarios we generally use the snappy hex mesh Yeah. So after afternoon session, Chandan will be talking about external flows. Okay. So okay. he will be able to give more uh, details regarding that. He was okay. working okay. on flow pass aerofoils and ex basically external flows. So mm -hmm. he'll be able to answer okay. your questions. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Happy Christmas. We have to use. I think it is possible, Raghavendra. In sender, I am not. I am not able to see in your mesh what happens in the sender. you don't use uh, blo multiple blocks then we may have a skewed cell there so there are few people who raised their hand chaitanya you want to ask something yeah hello sir yes yes so so you mentioned like uh, so while meshing so you created multiple blocks right yes yeah. yes uh, so on the outer surfaces like i see a curved uh, like no surfaces but the inside yeah. it is a rectangle like no uh, uh, tetrahedral kind of shape Yes. So, uh, what is the governing equations that are getting used? Because um, it, it's either Cartesian or polar, or how is it? How is it solving? Uh, because if I uh, like, because uh, I'm asking because I'm generally I write uh, codes from scratch. 
so uh, so we use either uh, cylindrical system or the tetrahedral like you know the cartesian system but this kind of mesh so like uh, because in cartesian like uh, the neighbors are i plus 1 like j plus 1 something like that but in this case it is something different altogether so how is the solver taking care of it so this is typically an example for a structured mesh so yeah exactly yes, yeah yes. yeah right so it's cartesian based i think i don't uh, yes Uh, if it is cartesian but uh, the cells are like no uh, curved yes. uh, because uh, then uh, then cartesian won't apply right i think maybe in different blocks it is taking uh, different uh, uh, like equations or how is it doing mm, the inner part of the block mesh i am not sure because the people who developed block mesh they only mention how to use it and how to make modifications etc from the existing code the basic logic as you said especially in the corner cells they will have only three neighbors right right yeah yeah so that but i'm not sure okay okay yeah, yeah. thank you sir yeah sure. then group someone group 11 raise their hand block mesh is a starting point as father uh, was asking already gmesh and other so- softwares are there it is already free so block mesh those who are not at all familiar with uh, especially cfd those are very new to cfd and uh, open form so we will start with block mesh because it is very simple and easy to understand once you start uh, understanding block mesh utility then if you go with the gmesh or any other packages then they will be able to understand it better way so block mesh in, to- in even in all to- all uh, workshops we will give some sessions on block mesh how can we do machine jet propulsion complex geometry it's always happy hex mesh we should use yes. okay so if there are no doubt then i will hand over to john john right we will have a hands on session yes sir yeah. okay, okay. <coughs> thank you thank you so much sir professor addition thanks a lot yeah yeah